I won't read every single one, um, but just to give you a flavor of what came out. Um, so, so I react to individual comments. I make threats or punishments. I increase the volume of my response. That's a nice way of saying it. <laughs> I focus on time constraints. Time constraint is going to increase activation. <laughs> um, I get more tired. That's definitely one of mine, too. Focused on personal priorities. <clears throat> so this goes into a lot of physical symptoms. Um, let's see, less tolerant. Not keeping up with practices that help, like meditation, prayer, exercise, whatever it is. Tourette's-like symptoms, so an actual physical thing happens for someone here. That's really good to know. Tourette's, uh, oftentimes it'll be either a tick or outbursts of, uh, usually it'll be words that you know, are aggressive or I can't think. <clears throat> Actually, um, assisted a teacher who has Tourette's uh, for a couple of years and as a physical therapist as well as a, a counselor. So that was interesting learning how he works with his own. But what was really cool was that when he would present and there was a lot of challenge from the audience, he would start to either tick or pre-tick. So it's like, oftentimes it's, it's he's in the window of tolerance, but when he goes out, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tick. It's a spontaneous muscle spasm contraction kind of pattern. More guarded and impulsive, um, imagining symptoms of cancer. So a lot of fear coming up, sounds like, of uh, illness. Okay, when I'm in the window of tolerance, magical state. So able to listen, repeat back, and process. So all of those wonderful things that you've read about and your therapist told you and your ministers have told you, you got it. <laughs> you can do it. And when you're out of the window, oh, when you're out of the window of tolerance, <laughs> overall runs the screen. <laughs> uh, well, I stay away from that fear. Okay. Sorry about that. Notice if your activation went up. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know? How do you know your activation went up? I jumped. You jumped. Is there anything else? Like, is there heat? Is there tension? Is there like? Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay. It's your system tightens. Yeah. Yeah. Now, has anybody noticed it's settled? Yes. It's starting to settle. So, in a way, that was what we call a little cycle of activation and settling. It's like, I don't know, <laughs> I've heard about that, people doing that. Like, I would never do that because I hate it. But we had activation and we had settling. And so, that is the secret of being able to repair a nervous system is having activation and settling happen that's with it, more or less within the window of tolerance. That was a little outside, I think, for some of us, our window of tolerance, like that's just what's done off the line. But that re uh, repetition in an infant, that's what forms attachment and the ability to process stress. Those two things are very closely linked. So that's part of Stephen Porges's information, uh, the polyvagal theory. I, um, I put Stephen Porges on the resource page. His work is kind of complex in a lot of ways, but if you watch him on YouTube, he's more manageable. Like his book, I didn't even bring it. <laughs> I have yet to find someone who can get through it, even if they're like a doctor. <clears throat> okay, so when I'm in the window of tolerance, I'm able to listen, repeat back, and process. I have a calm voice. I can find options, and I better problem solve. Energy. Calm, relaxed, patient, playful, laugh. Oh. Good. Not, not through, more confident. Ah, I got settled, I'm here, present. Able to connect with the person that you're with instead of like having all these like storylines and dialogues and things running, um, which Cord uh, is called being in a ventral vagal state, the social engagement. That's more on the healing side of the, uh, the nervous system <laughs> capacity. So, um, 
when you're having those thoughts? No, when oh. you're in a relational oh, oh, okay. state with a safe enough other where you feel calm and settled with the person and not quite managing being there with them. <clears throat> okay, and, and then we start to talk about the children. So they're more affectionate, creative, playful, they laugh more, they're more respectful. It's similar to us, right? And so, like, when they're out of regulation, we really can't expect them to do some of the things that they would do when they're regulated, or more regulated anyway, right? So, uh, conversely, when we see what we're calling disrespect, uh, they're out of the window of tolerance. So I can either choose to jump on them about being disrespectful, which is going to increase activation. If they're in a young state of the brain, it's not really going to land what you're saying in that moment anyway. But, you know, instead you might go, all right, they're out of their window of tolerance. I'm going to take a break here. I'm not going to necessarily separate from them because that might get into their attachment stuff. But I'm just going to be present with them. When it comes down and maybe later when we're relaxing, you know, maybe that's the time when you say, you know, in our family, we really value respecting each other and being safe together. And so, yeah, you might you might choose to do it then, or you might just go, wow, all right, right now, I have a window of tolerance. Let me just focus on that piece. Okay. Um, so outside on the symptom side of things, so it sounds like people want to, they have control, like they have to control everything. That to me would be a management strategy, but some of these things could go either way. Wherever you put them really doesn't much matter. Thank you so much for finishing that. Cool. Um, so, so you're more tired. I think that probably at least half of the people in this room have adrenal fatigue. I've had it before. It's like the 21st century stress syndrome, they call it. And that makes you feel tired because we're not really getting enough rest in general. Um, more anxiety. Rapid heart rate, so people are having panic, panic attacks. Um, again, with the raised voice, low patience, less physically active. So that, to me, would be on the dorsal side, so more on the collapse, like I don't have energy, I'm just going to sit here, I'm not going to move. <clears throat> more angry and aggressive, so that would be more on the top side of the chart, the fight or flight side. Um, demonstrate unkindness. Um, I'm really appreciating the vulnerability that you guys are, are sharing up here. Challenging stuff to say. Okay, child symptoms. Defiant, impulsive, withdrawing, and zoning out. So you can kind of see the different side of the fight or flight versus the collapse part. Right? Defiant is more on the active side and the impulsivity. Um, anxious anxiety, negative feelings and interpretations. That's right. This is right. So when you hear information, if you're more likely to always see the bad, if you call up a friend and you're always telling them everything that's wrong, you are out of the window of tolerance. <laughs> and all right, fair enough. You call because this terrible thing has happened and you just need to share it with your, with your good friend. Maybe you're not always out of the window of tolerance. But if that's your pattern, or if you have a friend that's like that, you're like, wow, that person is never in the window of tolerance, and their negativity tends to bring me down. It's like, hmm, I don't know if that's, that's a good place for me to go, because then it takes me more out of my window of tolerance. And it's, it's helpful sometimes when you give each other an ear, especially because you're here to support each other. But in my practice, I'm always wanting people to go back and forth between what's hard and what's helpful. That's why I'm putting up. What's it like in the window of tolerance? What are your supports? Right? So we need to shift and go back and forth. Because sometimes when you're really out of the window of tolerance, it's very addictive. It's, it's like your system gets convinced. The only way to get out of this is if I keep going, keep going, keep going. It's like, no, you're just going in a loop. So to get off that loop, I've got to step out. I've either got to change the channel and just be, you know, just be here, or I've got to like go, yes. This is terrible and it's awful. And now what? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a settling thing, or I'm gonna go. Yes, all of this sucks, and there's this other thing that's okay. And then it, it kind of softens 
and eases a little bit of the energy that's behind the challenge. How long has it been that we've been sitting in office buildings? Less than 200 years. I mean, adaptively as a human species, we weren't designed to sit in a chair for 16 hours a day and stress ourselves out and try to apply ourselves for hours at a time and then to rush home and like, oh, quick, quick, battery recharge right now. You know, we just don't work that way. We're organic beings. We need to take breaks. We need to take walks. And companies are starting to get smarter about this. For sure, they have walking meetings now, and they have, like, you know, a pool. <laughs> you go play darts down in the break room, or things like that. And all of that is, is helpful. And so, you know, just learning to be able to have your time during the day. Sometimes what's going to feel most, most restful is, like, I'm going to go and socially engage with my coworkers. We're going to go get coffee. Okay? So those are some of the, the ways that we work with it. Um, management strategies on this side of things. Um, symptoms, we also were talking about headaches um, and hitting. Picking on self. So uh, sometimes they use the phrase acting in versus acting out. Um, so sometimes people that are more dorsal will take it inside and blame themselves. This is all my fault. Those kinds of things. And those are harder to spot, honestly. The compliant child is more oftentimes a dorsal child, and it's compliance in a spacey way, like just a robotic, you're just doing whatever you say because you said to. Um, and they don't get the attention in the schools that the children who are doing the outbursts get. And that's... Or, or the homes. Uh, in the homes. The yeah, it's true. When you have siblings, one's quite like, thank God, at least this one is quiet. Right? But then it's like they, they also have a nervous system that is, is probably needing some support. And actually on the dorsal side, the collapsed side, it's a very high metabolic cost, which means your system is trying to slow everything down. It slows your breath. It slows your heart rate. It slows your digestion. That takes a lot of energy internally to maintain. And we were never meant to maintain that for more than a few seconds at a time. That's a, more of like when you're being hunted by a coyote and you go into freeze, you know, you're a possum, you go into freeze, and you, you play dead, and it, it shuts everything down. Now, if, if a lot of animals out in the wild, if they go into that state for more than a few minutes, they will die. Not even by being eaten, that process will kill them. And that process kills us, but it takes longer. It kills us with getting diseases and stress. I put Gabor Mate on the reading list, and I have his book up there that you can peek at, um, but he talks a lot about that relationship with stress and health uh, from an MD perspective, so that's helpful. <clears throat> okay, so management strategies, eating chocolate, um, doing control, working harder, that's a good one, I love that one. It's like, ah, uh, I'm, I'm really activated, I, I'll just work harder. And then I'll work and work and work until I collapse. <laughs> and in the morning, it'll look different. I don't know, that's my management strategy, too. Um, going away, that's more on the flight side of the flight. flight. It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to not be here, right? Um, find an internal place of calm. That's a very adaptive one. If you're able to do that, unless it's more going to dorsal, which is, is OK temporarily, but that's probably one we'd want to move away from over time. Children, they're going to watch TV, they're going to get on their devices, they're going to isolate, um, those sorts of things, electronics. Um, is that dorsal? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's both stimulating, but the person is in a dorsal state. So it's, it's kind of two things going on. Stimulation. When you say dorsal, what are you referring to? Um, I'm talking about the, the withdrawal, collapse. Uh, it's a state where you're very, um, where it's like the free state in a way. It's a little bit dissociated, and it is that process, the metabolic challenge where it's slowing all of your systems down. Like shut down. Mm -hmm. It's like shut down. But it's a physiological process of the, the dorsal side of the vagus nerve. So we're just, I'm using that term and hoping that with uh, just hearing the application of it, it'll start to make sense. Mm -hmm. But we could have a whole day on this back. Yes? I just have a quick question. Does removing the device from the electron, does that help with that? Or does it 
does that just lead to them finding another way to shut out? I love that question, and I'm so grateful that you asked it. Okay, so I tend to use a therapeutic use of the device. And so we're consciously, all right, now, because it's a management strategy for the child. If you take it away, now you've lifted the management strategy. They're either going to have to find a new one, or whatever's underneath is going to come up. Because they, if they can't get into the window of tolerance, they can't really be relational, right? Depending on how, how much charge they have running, then you're like, you know what, turn off the device, we're going we're gonna to be together as a family. Well, that might be way more stimulation than they can manage. So, it's the, and over time, you want them to expand their window of tolerance so that they can be more in the present. And so it's like, it's, it's sort of a really therapeutic decision and a balance over time. Like, all right, they're, they're pretty good in their capacity right now, I think I'm going to challenge their management strategy a little. So, all right, this afternoon we're going to go for a walk, right? And, and then, you know, see how they manage it. And then when they come back, they get on their device again. So over time, the capacity grows. But you have to stretch it. But first, they have to be in the window of tolerance more often, or they're not going to be able to manage it. So when you have that, when you have them going in, is it the, the stress from the trauma of being in the past that's causing that cycle? So, um, so it's... There's, there's trauma, right. and it's that dysregulation of the nervous system, that their system can literally not process the amount of stimulus that's coming into their system. Now, stimulus can be anything. They can be like, the cat came over and wanted a pet. Oh, that was a positive stimulus. I like that one, right? Or it's like, and in the background, there was also TV going, and mom was talking on the phone, and I'm hearing that too, and I'm thinking about how I still have to get my homework thing done, and all of the things that their system is trying to manage, processing the environment, processing their own thoughts, relationships, all of it going on at once, and they're completely overloaded. They flash me. <laughs> you can't have formulas for children with developmental trauma. Okay. Let's go have a break. Let's come back in about 15 minutes, and we'll keep going. Thank you so much. <laughs>